right, smart people. Here we are. We're talking about exam three. We're on problem number three. This. Let's see what it says. Find the surface area and volume of the given shape. What does that sound like to you? You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like this. The theorem of Pappus Goldinus. Okay? That's a U. That's a U. Goldinus. Okay? The theorems of Pappus Goldinus had to do with surface area and volumes of axis symmetric or revolved shapes. And those go like this. The surface area is equal to 2, well, I'll just say theta, okay? Sorry. Theta, r bar l, and then the volume is theta, r bar a, okay? Um, and then our case, right, since this thing is revolved 360 degrees all the way around, our equation is going to be surface area is equal to 2 pi x bar l, right? The, the x is in the y, so the distance is going to be in the x, and the volume is going to be equal to 2 pi x bar a. All right. So how do you solve these problems? Do you remember? Yeah, I do. I do. Were you asking me if I remember? <sighs> of course I do. Okay, here you go. Step one, draw the generating shape. What shape is going to make this thing? So this is like a cylinder with like a, a, a hemispherical groove around it. And then in one end of it, it's got a cone cut into it, right? It's flat on the bottom. What? Well, here you go. Let's say that's the axis of, the ro of rotation. What shape over here would you draw that when it gets rotated, whoop, all the way around, it would sweep out that shape, all right? Push, pause, and draw it. Ready? Go. Okay, are you back again? Let's see if I draw the same thing that you just drew, okay? I'm going to draw this. Okay. There it is. Wow. You tell me if I take that and I go zip and sweep it all around, it would make that? That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you, yo. Okay. This is a hundred millimeters. This, oh, it's totally to scale, is 60 millimeters. This is 40. And this down here is another 60. And we could calculate that too, couldn't we? Okay. So, yeah, and this goes down to that same plane there, okay? So this and this are on the same line. Okay? So what do you want to do first? Surface area or volume? Let's do surface area. Okay, fine. Here we go. <clears throat> Okay, I got a red pen here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot, a big fat dot, in every line segment that's going to touch the outside of the part, okay? So this line right here is going to touch, when he sweeps around, it's going to touch all the inside of the cone. This line right here is going to touch all of this part, all the way around that band, okay? This guy right there. Wait, why didn't you put it, the dot on the line? Because the centroid of a half a circle is not on the line, right? But that piece there is going to sweep out the whole little, the little groove there, the band. And then this guy down here, bam, is going to sweep out that bottom band. And then, of course, this line on the very bottom, when it goes all the way around, will touch everything on the bottom surface of our, our, uh, of our part there. So let's label these. Piece number one, two, three, four... Five. If you're gonna have somebody grade your work and you want and you want some partial credit in case you screw something up, tell your people what you're doing. Label your things. It makes it easy. Okay. So here I go. I have to sweep this all the way around, 360 degrees, which is really the same as two pi, isn't it? Okay. So the surface area. 
is equal to 2 pi. Okay, now I'm going to factor everything out here, okay, because what do I have here? I have x1, l1, x2, l2, x3, l3, x4, l4, and I had five pieces, right? x5, l5. Okay, I got to add all of those bits together to get my total surface area. Whoa, whoa. Okay. So what is X bar for piece number one? And when I say what is X bar, all I'm asking you is what is this distance right there? Okay. Well, that's nice and easy, isn't it? It is, I think. It's 50. That dot is in the middle of that line. From here to there is 100, so from here to there must be 50. Okay. Now the length of that line that's a little bit harder, but not really hard, because we can just use Pythagorean theorem to find it, can't we? So 100 squared plus 60 squared equals square root of that is equal to 116.6. Okay, so 50 times 116.6. That's what I got. Okay, x2. What is this? Here, that was x1. This is x2. Okay. Where's the dot? It's like, where's Waldo, right? Where's the dot? Well, it's at 100, isn't it? It's 100. 100. Like what we're going to make on the test. <laughs> okay, good. What's the length of the line? Well, that's nice and easy. It's simply 60. Okay. X bar for piece number three. Okay, this is one we got to use our table in the back of the book, okay? So from here over to here is 100, but then I have to come back some amount. And what is that amount? That amount is 2R over pi, okay? Again, that's the centroid of a half a circle's arc, right, or a line. And it's measured from the flat edge. So I'm going to go all the way over and then subtract back that much. Well, how much is that? Well, that's, um, that's 2 times 20 divided by pi. So 40 divided by pi is 12.73. But i got to go over 100, right? So 100 minus 12.73 leaves me with 87.3. There you go. Okay, and what's the length of that line? Well, remember, circumference is pi d, which in this case, the diameter is given as 40, but we only want half of that, don't we? So 20 times pi equals 62.83. So times 62.83, okay? Not enough space down there, do I? X4, okay? From here to there is X4, okay? And it's, it's 100, isn't it? 100 times the length of the line. Another 60, isn't it? Okay? And then finally, X5. Well, if that's 100, then that's at 50 times the length of the line, which is 100. Dude, put that in your calculator and you got it. Now, this is in millimeters, so it's going to be a big number because millimeters squared, it's a big number, right? So don't be afraid of that. So here we go. Inside the parentheses, I've got 50 times 116.6 plus 100 times 60 plus 87.3 times 62.83 plus 100 times 60 plus 50 times 100 equals, so that's 28,315, but that's just the inside of the parentheses. Now I've got to multiply it by 2 pi, so times 2 equals times pi equals. Oh my goodness, it's big. Okay. 177,000 
909 millimeters squared. Okay? There's the surface area. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, so what about the volume? All right, so I'm going to kind of erase some things here, okay? Because I'm not talking about lines anymore for volume. We're going to talk about areas now, aren't we? Okay, we got to get rid of these red dots. No more red dots. Well, we'll have some red dots, but they'll be different red dots, okay? All right, go away. You go away. All of you. And then you go away too. All right. Okay, here we go. Now we're talking areas, okay? Areas. So how many areas would you say this is? Mm, you know what I would say? Three areas. Three? Look, one is the triangle, okay? There's area number one, all right, the triangle. Number two would be this big rectangle right here, okay? You are not there. You're not really there. This big rectangle right here, okay, is shape number two. And then shape number three, I'm going to subtract off a half a circle over there. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we go. Volume is equal to, it's going all the way around again, isn't it? Two pi times. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, except I'm going to do this. XV of 1, XV of 2, and XV of 3, right? And I'm going to add those together. Oh, I'm going to subtract that one, aren't I? Okay, are you with me? Okay, shape 1's a positive, shape 2's a positive, but then that guy, you got to go. You're negative, okay? So X bar for shape number 1. All right, shape number 1. What do you think it is? Uh, okay, well, remember, this is 100, right? But for an area, X bar is at a third the base of the triangle or two-thirds the base from the other side. So it's 66.7, okay? 0.6667, right? And that's going to be times the area of piece number one, which is, uh, let's see, uh, the base is 60 times the height divided by 2, right? So it's 3,000. Okay, nice. Piece number 2, where's the center of it? Well, the whole thing is 100, so the center is right there. Or this was in a third. This one's in the middle, so the center is at 50 times the area. What's the area? Well, this is a little bit easier. It's a uh, hundred by a hundred, isn't it? So that's one hundred with two more zeros on it. Ten thousand. Okay. Uh, and then finally, the last one over there is where is X bar for this crazy shape here? Okay. Again, what I have this time is I'm talking about an area. Okay. So the centroid of the area is 4r over 3 pi, but that's measured from the flat side. So I'm going to go 100 and then subtract that from it. So it's 100 minus 4r over 3 pi. Okay, let's see what that is. Let's see, 4 times r is 20 equals uh, divided by 3 divided by pi is 8.48, okay, and then 100 minus that, 100 minus answer equals 91.51, okay. So this guy over here, give me some room, man. 91.51, that's the centroid times the area, well, it's pi r squared over 2, isn't it? So uh, the r is 20 squared times pi equals divided by 2 equals 628.3. Okay, and that's it. Let's put that in our calculator. Volume is equal to, here we go, 66.7 times 3,000 plus 50 times 10,000 
plus 91.51 times 628.3. Equals, that's inside the parentheses, right? Then I'm going to multiply that times 2 times pi. And that's going to be a big number, too. Volume. 4760114 uh, millimeters cubed. Okay? 4.76 million cubic millimeters. That's a lot, right? But cubic millimeters are really little, aren't they? Okay, do you understand how to do these? The most important part, without a doubt, on Pappas Goldinus problems is can you draw the generating shape? That's the most important part, okay? If there's a lesson here, there it is. All right, gang. See you on the next video.